In economics class today, we shall be looking at financial institutions. But well, the financial institution is grouped into three classes. The first class, we are going to look at financial institution one. Under this, we shall be looking at the definition of financial institution, types of financial institution that we have. And we shall conclude the class by looking at commercial bank in detail. Financial institutions. These are business units which hold money for individuals and corporate bodies and may borrow from them in order to grant loans or make other investments. So when we are talking about financial institution, we are looking at business units or business organizations where their main aim is to hold money for individuals and corporate bodies. They can also work, borrow from these individuals and corporate bodies not only that, in order to grant loan to people or to make investments. So whoever or which, whichever organization it may be, once they engage in the area of finance, that is to say they are trying to borrow or they are trying to lend or they are trying to accept deposit. Not only that, as well as well, making investment for people. So in that case, it becomes financial institutions. Types of financial institutions. Number one, banking institutions. People need to understand one thing that when we are talking about financial institutions, we are not only talking about banking. So we are going to group into two. So the first one is banking institution. And it have, which include commercial banks, commercial banks, savings bank, development bank, and central bank. All these are grouped under banking institutions. That is, they accept deposit and they try to well, grant loan to private individuals as well as corporate bodies. So they accept deposit. So when they are giving out loan, the loan can either be in time of short-term loan or medium or long-term loan. But when they accept deposit from the general public for safekeeping, they make them to be what banking institution. The second type, non-banking institutions, which include building societies, insurance companies, stock exchange markets, and higher purchase companies. All what we have mentioned here, they are not into banking, but they are into financial institutions. So we group them as non-banking institutions. They are not accepting deposits from the general public. And then they are not just giving out loan. But the main thing we need to understand between the banking institution and non-banking institution is in the area of uh, accepting deposits. Banking, they accept deposit and other valuable documents. But non banking, they are not interested in other valuable documents. But they do the accept deposit, but not like the way the banking institution accepts their own. Commercial banks. I haven't mentioned type of financial institution we have. Uh, we, we, have. we say we have banking institution and we have non banking institution. When we are talking about commercial bank, it happens to be a banking institution. And what they are into, see, these are financial institutions where deposits and other valuable items are accepted from the public for safe keeping. And lending of short-term loans with the sole aim of making profit. So when we are talking about financial banks, we are talking about financial institutions. But the type of financial institution that commercial banks are, they, they are banking institutions. And what do they do? They accept deposit and other valuable items. Deposit and other valuable items from what? From general public for safe keeping. So which implies that if you want to keep your documents that are valuable, you can keep your documents with commercial banks. If you want to deposit with them, you can also do. They are not only doing that, but lending of short-term loans. That is, commercial bank can grant loan 
if you are interested but the loan they are going to grant you will be short period and what we are talking about short period of time that is it will not exceed more than a year between one month and 12 months that what commercial banks can grant in time of our credit that is loan how they are in the business without any objective than the sole aim of making profit so as they are granting loan to the general public or to individual or corporate body they are doing it in order to make profit out of that because commercial banks they are into a business that is why we call it business units in what in financial institutions functions of commercial banks number one acceptance of deposit we have said it in the definition that uh, commercial banks are there accepting deposits from the general public in order to have a uh, safekeeping so commercial banks are trying to uh, to take deposits from the general public either private individual corporate body or not business organization so what they do they accept deposits from these people for safekeeping the second one lending of money in the definition as well we said they try to lend they give out loan to private individual or corporate body so we are talking about lending of money it can either come in time of a loan or overdraft when you say loan a situation where you take an agreement with the bank that you want to take well, a credit facility that is formed from them for a certain period of time having been told in interest to be, well, to be paid but when you say overdraft is when you withdraw beyond what you have in your account in order to meet your customer need at that period that's overdraft so commercial bank try to assist their customer by lending them money either in loan form or in overdraft form number three agent of payment when you say agent of payment commercial banks can make payment on behalf of their customers that is when you have an account with them they can be paying on your behalf that is what we, through what we call credit transfer so having taken an agreement with them that is having filled the form that you need to work uh, to pick up right the bank can be paying the work uh, the money on your behalf maybe your insurance premium your children fee and other things like that so we, we assume that they were they are agent of a uh, payment number four provision of financial advice when the firm or private individual that is trying to go into a business need financial advice commercial banks are there to assist their customers when it comes into a financial matters so commercial banks try to give financial advice either to corporate body or non-profit making organization so they try to do this the number five discounting bill of exchange when you say discounting bill of exchange a situation where someone take credit facility from another so they have seen the creditors in getting their money before the due date so so that the debtor can pay at the due date that is instead the creditors are waiting till the, the period that the debtor has, uh, has signed for the war for the due date the creditors can take the war the deal to the bank and discounting it so the bank will pay them so that the creditor can continue with their economic activity and debtors too will continue with their economic activity but the debtor will now make the payment at well at the due time then the, the, the last one safekeeping of values it should be noted that it is not only money that we keep in the bank we can also keep valuable items in the bank for for safe for safe keeping types of accounts or, or deposit they either call it account or they call it deposit so every commercial bank uh, has what three these three types of account that i want to explain and the first one we call it savings account what do you buy this is an account designed for low income earners and students in order to inculcate the habit of saving into them which attract interest which attract interest any so that is this type of account attract interest so the the the, the depositor of this type of account will earn interest but what we are trying to understand here is that 
the, the account or the deposit is a sign purposely to, to create habits in people in having the element of our savings in them so that the, the little income they are earning they are not just spending it anyhow so low income earner we are trying to inculcate habit of saving likewise students that are earning little from their parents just to have habit of saving that is the essence of this type of uh, account but this account as we have said the holders we earn interest out without more it may be from the commercial bank but they are allowed to withdraw here just three times in a month so if someone withdraws more than three times in a month the person will not earn interest the person will not earn interest because in order to call in cockpit habit of saving so they have to restrict them from what we drain anyhow in this type of a account second type of uh, account that we have is what we call current account. This account is designed for businessmen, corporate bodies, and higher income earners who frequently use funds toward their economic activities with the use of checks for withdrawal. If we are talking about current accounts, we are talking about people that frequently make use of money in their economic activity. So these people they cannot keep their money in the bank for longer period, but they make use of form frequently. So they make use of check in withdrawing their money from the bank. But if someone is operating this type of account, is charged commission. That is, the person is paying commission to the bank, maybe according to the number of checks, or not only that, not only that, but likewise what well, the account you are operating. So the bank will charge you on the check leave that you are using. They also will charge you. On the account you are uh, you are using. So in a nutshell, current account will attract commission because of what uh, people using it. They are uh, they frequently withdraw the money for their business activity. The third type of account we call fixed deposit. This account is designed for those with excess liquidity by keeping in a uh, in a bank for a specific period of time in which the bank pay interest. So if someone is trying to go for this type of a deposit or this type of account that we call fixed deposit, right? It implies that uh, you have excess money in your hand that you don't know what to use the money for. But instead of wasting the money, someone can uh, open an account that we call fixed deposit. And you now fix the account for the period of time that you desire, maybe for three months, maybe for six months, maybe for one year or two years, but it depends the number of period, that is the specific period you want to uh, fix the money. So we can, if you don't call it fixed deposit, we call it time deposit, because the order will specify the specific period of time. In this type of account, you earn interest, but the interest you are going to earn is far, far, far higher than the one of a savings account. Not only that, in this type of account that we call fixed deposit or time deposit, you are not allowed to be withdrawing anyhow, like the one of a savings account. But here, before you can withdraw, you must give seven days notice to the bank that you want to withdraw from that account. And if you withdraw before the majority date, you will also be well penalized. But the bank will tell you the penalty when you are doing that. So these are the three types of account that we have with commercial bank. The first one we call it savings account that is designed for low income earners in order to cultivate habits of savings. Not only low income earners, but students. But we, we, can, we also observe that corporate bodies to the open savings account for one reason or the other, but the account designed for low income earners and students. The second one we said current account designed for businessmen women or corporate body who frequently use phone in carrying out their economic activities but people with good income they too they can open such an account but that account attract commission and the third one we say fixed deposit account we are someone with excess liquidity can keep the money with the bank for a specific period of time whereby the person will also have better interest that is far far better than a savings account that we have mentioned but here you cannot withdraw anyhow. But before you can withdraw, the bank must be notified by giving them seven days notice. Money creation. If you don't call it money creation, you can call it credit creation. And what do you mean by this? 
This is the process by which the commercial banks make it possible for more deposits to be made by granting loans or overdrafts. So if they want to create more money in the circulation or to create more credit in the circulation, it is the role of commercial banks to make it possible by what? Well, by making more deposits to be made by granting loans or overdrafts. Right? By lending, either by loans or overdraft, this makes the volume of money in the circulation, which in, your, in turn expands the purchasing power of the people. So if we want to have more money in the circulation, commercial banks are, are charged with this responsibility by granting loan. And for them to grant loan, I mean for more credit to be created or more money to be created in the economy, they must make sure that well, they are granting loan to the general public and charging interest on loan. If they are granting loan and they are not charging interest, there will be a problem in the banking system. So they must be willing to grant loan and will please the interest. Not only that, we expect commercial banks to also grant overdraft to customers, those with current accounts. Because only those in current all those with current account can make use of overdraft. So they should allow them to withdraw more than what they have in their account in order to work uh, to carry out their economic activity. So by doing this, more money will be created. And they were the purchasing power of the people in the economy will increase. Not only that, we also expect the central bank of the country to uh, to put in place what we call cash reserve. That is, what should be the cash reserve or cash ratio? So they need to determine that. And for, for more money to be created or credit to be created, then there must be collateral security in order to secure the loan so that the customer won't run away with the money and at the end, the banking system will be in, work, in problem. So this is how money can be created. And for, for, for more money to be created, there are certain assumptions that we need to understand. This should be noted in creating credit or money. That is, for money creation to occur or credit creation to occur, the following should be noted. A. No single bank can create credit except the entire banking system. That is, for money creation to occur in an economy, it must be the entire banking system that will do the work together. Not one single bank will be doing it. So that's number one assumption. Number two, that no excess reserve exists. The central bank should put in play what we call cash ratio so that no bank is allowed to have excess reserve. By having that, it's going to be a problem. On the world, there will be a problem in the area of money creation. So it will go beyond the limit of uh, the, the monetary authority if there is a well, excess reserve. So we shouldn't allow excess reserve to exist. Then C, bank only invest in loan, overdraft, and purchase of treasure bill. For money creation to occur, we expect banks to only invest in loan, in overdraft, and then buying government or treasure bill. That is another assumption that we expect so that we can have good work, good output when it comes to money creation in the economy. And the last one we have there, it should be demand deposit. That is the only account that should be, it should be uh, that can only our welcome money creation or credit creation should be our demand deposit that we call current account. That is, that is the only account we expect that will assist the entire banking system in creating money or creating credits. Examples. Question one. Time deposit has the same meaning as A. Current account. B. Demand deposit. C. Fixed account. D. Bank deposit. The right answer is fixed deposit account. Question two. Which of the following is a bank's responsibility to its shareholders? A. Making profit. B. Creation of money. C. Paying interest rate. D. Issuing currencies. The right answer is A. Making profits. Question 3. 
Which of the following is a function of commercial banks? A. Even currencies. B. Asset deposits. C. Determinate interest rate. D. Bankers bank. The right answer is B. Asset deposits.